Why is there so many parts on the floor? Welcome back to another episode of the Impreza GC8 build. And today the car is done. It is 100% finished. It is running great. We're going to get it on the dyno and see what it does. That's exactly what I wish I was telling you guys, but I'm not. Today I'm here to tell you that we have a laundry list of things that still needs to be done to the car. Let's take a closer look. Before we do anything, we are going to install these, which are cheap $40 Amazon LED garage lights. There is no lights in this garage. Barely anything. There's one up there and a few in the front, which makes it very difficult to work. So we're going to throw these up, see if it lights up the garage. Before, and hit it pops. After. There we go. Much better. Look at that. The whole car is lit up now. <laughs> Look at that thing. That is bitching, man. You know, it even looks cool. <laughs> the way they line up. Better than working on a car? Man, like you can't look up at them. <laughs> Not bad. I wonder what For the... 35 bucks. Starting from the top, the tuner informed me that he wants a cold air intake system into the fender. Right now it has a short ram intake on it that's just going to be sucking in warm air from the engine bay. Also wants a turbo blanket to keep down the heat. The aerial separator that I installed. He wants the street edition. I didn't check my emails. I bought the comp. The street edition is what he wants because the PCV valve system will still be sucking vapors from the crankcase. The comp only does it under heavy boost. Street car, race car. Okay. The electronic boost controller right now. I do not have a vacuum line going to the top of the external wastegate. He wants that. So I have to redo the plumbing. They also want larger fittings, quarter inch fittings. They come with an eighth inch fittings for the vacuum lines. Got to get more vacuum hose. The AIT air intake temp sensor. Luckily I haven't welded it yet or had it weld, but he wants the bung welded to the side. I had the hole in the bottom of the pipe. Good thing I got a hold of the guy doing it and he stopped. But now I can't find a stainless steel bung. The one that came with the AEM is aluminum. Fabricator says it's going to be hard to weld aluminum to steel. So I have to find a steel one. The ones that I buy are coming in wrong. They're not, they're too long. The filament won't reach and get the, won't reach to the right spot. Uh, he wants to go complete speed densening tuning. So no mass airflow. The harness I was going to get from iWire, thank God I didn't get it yet, is not going to be a mass airflow and the IAT. It's just going to be the IAT, so I have to get the harness and then a mass airflow block off plate. The external wastegate, he must have, have, I have to send him pictures to make sure that the fire ring is okay and the dump tube is all smashed up and bent and it's just dumping right into the side of the downpipe. There's soot and gross stuff everywhere, so he says if I want to get a longer dump tube to the bottom of the car, I need to get that before the tune. The up pipe, we will go over that. It is where the external wastegate and the flange meet is completely corroded. There's so much corrosion on there that the two aren't even budding together. Nightmare. It is a stainless steel up pipe. Somebody welded a external wastegate steel pipe to the side of it and it is not looking so good. Over the big guns. <laughs> Say hi. Hi. It's Pops. Third hand. Grandpa. My dad. He's good, huh? How do you feel about this? Oh, you know I love working on this car. I live for it. Oh, he has helped me put a transmission in this thing before. He's better than he even than he'll ever admit. Why is there so many parts on the floor when they should be in the car? What'd you do? <laughs> Why are these parts on the floor? Well, we had to take the wastegate back out because it wasn't budding up to the up pipe. And the up pipe is very corroded and crusty. It looks like the welds are broken inside. I mean, this thing is not in that good a shape. Headers had to come off. The down pipe had to come out. It's back there. Couldn't get the up pipe out, so we had to unbolt the transmission and motor mounts. Jack up the engine about an inch to get all this stuff out. And I tell you what, I am just about completely done with this car. One thing leads to another. Just when we think we're ready to put it on the dyno and it's ready, 
I am just about at my wit's end with this thing. Every single thing we touch has to be fixed, replaced. I'm just about completely done. Losing hope. Utter loss of hope. Please like this video and hit the thumbs up down below. Also subscribe. It does help the YouTube algorithm. Maybe I can continue this channel. Maybe we can finish this build. Thanks. Better look at the up pipe now that I took off the heat wrap. Um, you can see here all the wrap marks. Now this is stainless steel pipe. Now I don't think any of this is, it's, it's all just like mark, I mean, it's, we can't even feel it. It just looks like it's kind of dirt. Um, the part right here, you can see that the wrap went across the mild steel. It is completely pitted. I've never driven this in the rain. I mean, this car got this way. I, when I wrapped it, I had a piece of wrap going right across here and you can see what it did to that pipe and that's just steel it must be like a mild i think like i said it's a mild steel so i think it's okay to wrap this pipe again if i want to do it in a with the, with this thermal wrap again because it is stainless steel i'm worried about it rusting i don't think it's gonna rust though the only rust that i saw was on the mild steel part doesn't look like it'll rust on the stainless steel. It's just kind of leaving some marks here. But this is this gets so hot and it's right next to a turbo drain tube that was leaking on the car. When I pulled the transmission, I had to replace it because it was just leaking everywhere. And that hose, I mean, I think this thing could probably melt that hose off. So it has to have some kind of thermal barrier on there. And um, I'll look around and see what kind of options we have for it. Header, I still have to fix the external waste, or sorry, exhaust gas temperature bung that came with it. It's a Mad Dad header, and that have a little copper fitting in there there. Copper is gonna get real hot and really easily and get loose, so I bought some stainless steel ones. The previous owner had them wrapped with thermal wrap. You can see what happens when moisture gets stuck. Now, even if you don't drive your car in the rain, moisture is always gonna be in the air. The thermal wrap is a fabric-based, synthetic material that will hold moisture in. Like I said, if you're not driving it through puddles and in the rain, you think it's a fair weather car, there's still moisture in the air. There's still condensation that builds up in the pipes and the headers. So this is stainless steel. I'm gonna clean that up and uh, it, should, it should be okay. There's nothing super corrosive. It's just all surface rust and muck and grime over the years. But we're going to get that cleaned up just for my well-being knowing that it's in decent shape. We got a few other things that they mentioned that I should do. Raise the ride height of the car. It has coilovers on it. They want it higher because it has to clear the dyno. And they don't want to break anything or rip the bottom of the car apart. Tire pressure has to be checked. Have to top off the coolant because the air oil separator is installed and I haven't done that yet. I haven't bled the system. Oil change has to be done. It's been a long time. Don't have many miles on the car, but it's been sitting. Alignment, they would like to the car to be running straight, not crooked sideways on their dyno. AC needs to be fixed. All of a sudden, the AC's not working. I don't know if it's a line, what it is. Got to look into that. Oil leak, that is going to be a big one. I don't know where it's leaking from. There is oil all under the bottom of the car. Not terrible. I really hope it's not coming from the front cover because that means the radiator has to come out the hoses the fans the whole front cover has to come off to see hopefully it's a valve cover or the half moon seals or something other than like an oil pump or a front or cam seal or crank seal oh so it's getting very discouraging and i'm pretty much losing all hope with this car i don't feel like it's ever going to be done we're going to take this one step at a time see if we can get this list uh Hammer it out. I mean, with a project car, there's nothing really else you can do. Nothing is factory. I mean, so much has been changed that it's always going to be constantly something that has to be tinkering with or tuned on. I'm glad it's not my daily. One more thing that I'm going to add to the list reluctantly because it's so much money is the intercooler. Let me show you why. The tuner does not prefer the way this intercooler is routed. Turbo is here. Hot air comes out of the turbo, goes through the intercooler pipe here, goes through the intercooler, cools down the air, air comes out, the other pipe is at the fabricator, but it's gonna come from here into the throttle body. 
As it crosses in the throttle body, it crosses the turbo. Turbos are very hot, they heat things up. So I could put a turbo blanket over that, wrap it, maybe a heat shield. I don't know if it's gonna be enough. He says it still might heat soak that cold air, which defeats the purpose of having a front mount intercooler. He wants one that routes the opposite way. So it would go from out of the turbo, goes this way, hot air, hot air, goes through the intercooler, comes out cold air all through here, and then goes right into the throttle body. Here, that's a good option, but they're very, very expensive. I mean, $1,000 to $2,000 for intercooler. I could try to just do intercooler piping. He also stated he doesn't like the fact that it's stainless. Thermodynamics of some sort, stainless, he says, does not radiate or reflect the heat. I don't know. He's saying he likes aluminum. I don't know. Maybe it's a stretch. Maybe I'm just thinking too much into it. I really don't want to spend another thousand or two thousand dollars on an awesome front mount intercooler just so that it charges the other way. I don't know. We'll, we'll keep it there on the list for a little bit. Maybe we'll scratch it off. Hopefully. Well, folks, this is a very, very, very long laundry list, and I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to do. Don't even know if I want to continue anymore. So, hmm. Thanks for watching. That's gonna be a wrap. Hit the thumbs up down below and like because I didn't like. And also subscribe. Great YouTube algorithm. Let's get it going. Oh, I uh, just don't even know what to say. Comment down below. Tell me what you think or don't think. What do we do? I mean, will this thing ever be finished? Do we continue? Do we even try anymore? I mean, oh gosh, well, no words. Thank you for watching. See you maybe next time.